two years competing as a natural bodybuilder, three years of being a Christian. As my bodybuilding career has grown, so has my faith. And during my career as a natural bodybuilder, I found a major problem with being a Christian and a bodybuilder. If we've never met, my name is Steven, and this is my wife, Betsy. Will you marry me? We just officially crossed the one-year mark in marriage. During the last two years, I've done two competitions, and she just finished her first one. So clearly, bodybuilding is a huge thing in our new formed family. Your pros are still here. Your pros are still here. Uh, we got 40 grams. 40 grams of oats. Oh, missed me. Oh, did you get blueberry muffin out for me? Yeah. Wow. 40 grams of oats. Two scoops of the blueberry muffin. Oh, oh, I almost spilled it again. This weight training obsession began when I was 15 years old, a time when Mom's Chili and David Laid YouTube videos were the only resources I had for getting big. During those early and primitive years of lifting, I wasn't a Christian. I grew up in a loving Christian home, but hadn't accepted Jesus into my heart. I was lost, but I sure did love lifting. And as college came around, my lostness grew, and so did my passion for working out. We're doing a little bit of cables, a little bit of extensions, just kind of really burning out and uh, kind of showing the world what we're made of. So follow along, Seth. I was self-obsessed. <laughs> another man in life. Hollywood influencer. Vain and super insecure. I went to a Christian college, but was the furthest thing from a Christian. I worked out hard, but had no respect for the sport of bodybuilding. I loved being with people at the gym, but only because they complimented the way I looked. Gotta be the record. Thanks for tuning in. That was so good. So after an addiction to attention, pornography, the opinions of others, external validation, physical validation, uh, these all things caused a chain reaction in my life and I felt more hopeless and lost than ever once they all failed me. And that was the exact moment that God entered my life from what I could see because he was there the whole time and he reshaped everything. He gave me Betsy, my beautiful wife. He gave me purpose to serve him. And ultimately he reshaped my perspective and the why as to, to why I was bodybuilding. And God was gracious enough to challenge my perspective on working out, which besides him was the one thing that had been consistent in my life. I lost 60 pounds, placed second in my first bodybuilding show. It is Saturday, December 3rd. And that's right, it is the day, it is show day. We have finally, we finally made it. And truly developed both spiritual and physical discipline and my life changed. But during my second competition prep, I felt the tugging on my heart. I noticed a problem. Is this glorifying God? Is bodybuilding an act of worship to God or to me? Is a sport that seems to revolve on physical appearance alone biblical? I sat in these questions, I prayed about these questions, and I asked for wise counsel from much older and wiser believers. I was stuck. Had I been pursuing a dream only saved for myself before Jesus was in my life? And as I searched my heart and searched God's word, he spoke. He spoke through people. He brought in spiritual leaders. He loved me through my new church. He spoke to my wandering heart through the Bible. Bodybuilding, like any hobby, is a gift from God. But once I allow college Stephen to speak to my heart and not God, it becomes about pride and vanity. Once I get to the gym and put my hoodie on and feel the need to prove something about my work ethic and my crazy physique, God is no longer at the gym. If I don't learn anything from the physical discipline and apply it to my spiritual life, I've put the barbell over the Bible and deemed physical sweat way more important than spiritual sweat. It is uh, the first rain we've gotten in Virginia in a long time, so I'm going to get the wife some coffee and enjoying the uh, peaceful sounds. But the gym community and bodybuilding community obviously is something that's really important to me. Uh, it's one of my favorite communities. I'm there obviously all the time. I meet my best friends there. I've met my best friends there. I meet with my spiritual mentor there. I'm always at the gym and it is a really important community to me. And as a lot of you know, if you are a follower of Jesus or if you've been to the gym, there's a lot of people that don't know about Jesus at the gym and it's a wonderful place to um, minister to people, to tell people about the good news that we have in our lives. Um, and we can't do that if our heart posture or if our identity is in the wrong place. Um, if we go into the gym as a matter to serve ourselves and not the Lord, uh, it's gonna be hard for us to show the fruits of the Spirit, to exemplify characteristics of Jesus. So that's the main point of this video. 
is heart posture. Um, the problem with being a Christian and a bodybuilder comes when our identity is in the wrong place. It is such a tightrope to walk sometimes, especially since bodybuilding and working out can so easily become a self-centered thing. It's You've gotta be very careful as you walk that tightrope to make it about Jesus, to keep your heart in the right place, to bring community, get accountability around you, uh, to make sure that your ego doesn't get the best of you, that you don't become vain and that you don't um, make yourself the hero of your story when Jesus is the hero of your story. Um, you know, as a Christian, we are called to live differently and that certainly applies to the gym. But one of my favorite kind of analogies is from a book called Disciplines of a Godly Man and the author talks about in weight training and in this situation, bodybuilding, a lot of people have different physical genetics. I can tell you, for example, from competing, I've gotten beat by a lot of guys that have far superior genetics and I probably won't ever beat them. And that's a head start that they have on me no matter how hard I work. And they certainly have worked hard, but with our spiritual life, with our spiritual walk with the Lord, we all have the same spiritual genetics. We're all sinners, we're all rotten to the core, and we all were born with the same spiritual genetics. And if we work at it, if we train it, if we develop discipline that carries over from physical discipline to spiritual discipline, and if we have some spiritual sweat, spiritual hypertrophy, we can all grow in spiritual maturity and we can make the gym a place to tell people about Jesus. We can keep our identity in the Lord and not the gym. We can develop discipline um, with our selfish, uh, selfish core, with our selfish tendencies when we're in the gym. But Thank you so much for watching. Um, this concept is really important to me and uh, that's what I want this channel to be about. Uh, just the journey of balancing the gym, of balancing fitness, but keeping the Lord as a priority. Um, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, send it to a friend. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Uh, but till next time, thanks for watching.